Hello guys, welcome to my channel. If you are a returning visitor, then I'm happy that you're back. In today's video, I'm going to share a little bit of um, an experiment with you that I created out of a, like a completely random idea, I'm not gonna lie. So basically, I will share a little bit of a TikTok video with you that I created a um, few days ago, basically last week, when it was like snowing outside and it was crazy. So yeah so now you will understand how inspiration is born <laughs> so here we are this is the tiktok that uh, that i created a few days ago when basically i was just outside and uh, i'm here in this video i'm just uh, telling the people that cg when he said that you cannot go without noticing things around you and this is what I saw on the street and look at these little bumps and all these textures and I said wow this is something really really cool that I might just be able to use in sampler and you know why why not so you can you can check this out on tiktok I'm not gonna bore you with, with this right now but anyway so this is how it happened and these are the photos that I took outside check this out for example oh yeah these are my, my gum boots obviously so cool so this is how it looked this this, uh, this texture and i was like wow this is this is it you know this is something we we are going to turn into a material with substance 3d sampler so let's dive into it so here we are in substance 3d sampler and uh, what happens is that i locate the image from one of my folders and i just drag and drop this image into the viewport so now you can see that you can select this image to material filter. I spoke about it some quite some time, uh, quite uh, like many times already. And um, you can add already immediately a crop layer, so you can you know crop your material later on. And um, you can upscale. But you, I took this photo with my iPhone, so I did not really um, have to upscale anything. But you can also do that, and you just click on import, and now the filter is going to work start working and now immediately we have this this really nice uh, nice material i will just lower the resolution for now so if you open the the 2d 3d view and you go on your crop layer then here you can see that this is the the part that was cropped and i was like mm, this is this is what uh, what i want to use or which part which part i actually want to use so you can you can actually select the one you would like to you would like to use and then just wait a little bit and it it is uh, going to update mm -hmm. you can change the tiling to see what we are what we are, we are dealing with and i can see that it's not uh, tileable so what i can do is i just add a make it tile filter on the top of it and now it, it disappeared you can you can play around with the threshold I think it's pretty okay for now. You know, I think we are good. And uh, here is the material already. If you don't wanna have these uh, these these colors, you can um, just change it, of course. And you can actually expose this parameter in. Uh, so when you import it to Substance 3D Painter, then you can you can uh, have these as settings. So when you send it to substance 3d painter you can expose uh, expose some of these these uh, these parameters so i just saw that maybe i don't want to have it like this blue but but more like a, a little bit like lighter so like this and maybe i want to have the cracks a little bit more uh, more intense and i always do it like this it's just my tick <laughs> you don't have to do it of course but um and then you can change the the custom base color so that it matches your your material and so it's not that uh, aggressively dark for example and i like this blue color scheme is better yeah and um you can decide about the quantity and i was like oh okay this is something i like this is the surface it looks pretty so now we are ready with this and what we can do is we can export it 
I already spoke about this. You have to name your uh, name your material, select the folder, and check the masks. Uh, masks. Uh, check the export channels or what what you would like to export. So basically, this is what uh, this is what I did as well. In the second part of the video, I'm going to talk about how I use this material in Cinema 4D with subsurface scattering and how I created this, uh, this really interesting material. I'm going to show you the picture, this one we are talking about. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you how I created this, uh, this render. So now I just moved myself down to the bottom. <laughs> you can see better and my face is not covering anything. So here we are. This is the scene that I set up in uh, Cinema 4D. And here is this uh, shift material that I created using these, uh, these image maps that are in this, uh, this folder. I'm going to show you. These are the, let's see, maybe you can see them bigger. Yeah, so these are these images that uh, that came out. So this is the base color and um, I actually edited it a little bit to, to be a bit more, more, more lighter. And we have a height map, we have a normal map and a roughness map. And basically that's, uh, that's all. And what I did is that um, I just created a new, you know, uh, standard redshift material. And uh, here I opened the node editor so I can explain to you what exactly happened. Let's make it a bit, a bit bigger. So I imported like, you know, I already spoke about this in my videos. You can just drag and drop the, the image maps here and you can start connecting the nodes to the right places. Everything is named accordingly where you are supposed to, where, where you are supposed to plug this. Um, but you can get creative with it. So for example, I saw that I'm going to use the roughness map as uh, the weight in the subsurface scattering. So if you go scroll down and you see the subsurface scattering here, you can see that uh, this is already, uh, this is already plugged in and here you can, here you can um, edit this if you, if you want. Um, I did not want to do anything else with it. Um, what I changed is the, the color in the, in the radius and the scale, I don't know if it's visible. Um, and basically that, uh, that is how you get this really interesting, transparent um, look of this, this material. And of course I connected uh, the bump map and the displacement um, node to, to the right places. I have multiple videos about this on YouTube. You can, you can just watch these. Um, so this is how I worked with this. And the only thing I did is that I added a displacer to my, to my object and uh, I just added a random noise because I wanted to have a little bit like a bumpier, bumpier surface. And uh, it's actually super, super simple. And you can animate this obviously or, or anything if you feel like. And uh, this is how I started to get this really interesting details on this uh, on this on this surface, and uh, I have another project actually that I can show you that what what I did with this material. Yeah, and um, okay, before the, before we do that, you can save your material. So if you go to to this uh, little asset browser, you can uh, select a folder for your for your materials and you can just drag and drop it here and then you can you can basically drag and drop it back into into another I don't know when it's not loading now anyway we will jump into the the other project and uh, and we will see so here we are back in another project finally I could uh, make this work so asset browser and I put this stuff into this uncategorized folder so what you you can do is that uh, you can just drag and drop it here and then it will be it will be added so I already saved my, my mater material here so whenever you start a new project you can just you know, drag and drop it back and uh, this is the um, this is the other project that, uh, that I created with, with this material 
and I think it's really it turned out really interesting with all these little little bubbles and so to make this work you actually need a redshift object tag I forgot to talk about this in the in the other video so now here you can you can see this, uh, this really interesting little bits so basically in the redshift uh, tag you go to geometry and then you have to enable this um, these settings and you can play with the displacement scale so you can go to to the extremes with that if you want or you can just you know keep it as a as a subtle moment let's say so now you can see that it looks really extremely extremely extreme and if you take it just down to one and it's just like a subtle little thing so that is how i work with uh, with these materials and you can check out the, my my social media for these renders and uh, you can find find uh, find everything all these all these all these renders and the little animations and um, i hope you enjoyed this video and see you on the next one